Memory Transcription Subject Talon Prime News Journalist Date Standardized Human Time July 17, 2136 I stood in my living room staring at an old portrait of myself and my beloved mate. Her snow-white fur contrasted my midnight black fur and floppy ears filled me with a bittersweet nostalgia at annoying her by flicking them over. Her belly was noticeably large with our soon-to-be daughter Elva. I let out a light chuckle at the thought that my little mountain flower really did that. I looked upon the portrait and had to wonder what my beloved would do if she were here right now. Thankfully, my sulking was interrupted by our daughter Elva as she sprinted into the room and nearly tackled my graying hide to the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I let out a happy sigh as I leaned into my beloved Elva's embrace. Thank you for signing up with me. I gripped her a little tighter as she reminded me of giving in to her debate and signing up for the buffet line. No, for signing up to the Human Venlil Exchange Program. I am a journalist for the most prestigious news channel on all of Venlil Prime, and I will be objective about this and not let my biases dictate our story. I know you are scared, Papa. I promise you that everything we know about the ecology and behavior of predators is wrong. It has to be. I loosened my grip on our embrace and held my daughter gently in my arms so I could look at her and appreciate the hope and joy on her face that sported my fur, yet framed by her mother's floppy and adorable ears. I know, Elva, Ivy reread the ecology reports almost a hundred times now. It just feels crazy, but the logic is there, not to mention the proof. A family of Gojides living out in the middle of wilderness, purposely introducing predators. It's just a lot for my old bones to take in. Elva gave me an amused flick of her ears, yet an annoyed flick of her tail. You aren't even over the hill yet! I know you started graying earlier than normal, but you raised me by yourself and dealt with all the idiots that kept saying I have predator disease. I flicked my tail in disgust at all the people that tried to throw my innocent daughter into the same system that abused the very people they were supposed to help, simply because she was just curious about the world and never took someone's word at face value unless there was proof of their claims. I remember the day my old boss fired me for daring to question the extermination officers on what exactly that large Venlil did to be diagnosed with Predator S disease beyond simply being big. I remember the photo of him being held up by the neck and imagined my daughter getting the same treatment and shuddered. I tussled the fur on Elva's head, flapping her ears back and forth. Come on, let's go get something to eat. I shoved those dark memories down as we started to leave, only for both of our hollow pads to go off at the same time. Elva gasped as she read hers, and I felt my hope for not being selected sink into despair. I read the message we had both been sent. Welcome to the Venlil Human Exchange Program. We thank you for joining. We shall contact you once an appropriate pairing has been found. Speg, no way out of this now, Elva was dancing in a circle in pure happiness. I had to make the same mistake twice now. I was going to have to trust the government with my daughter's life now. At the very least, Tarva is one of the most competent leaders we have ever had. I slapped Elva with my tail as I turned to walk out of our home, and she quickly caught up to my side as we went to have lunch and... Ugh. Celebrate the good news. I felt Elva's tail wrap around mine and I gently brushed against her as we walked down the path through our front garden. Several Lacey were hard at work doing their duty to pollinate our garden. Looks like we might have a good harvest, Elva cheerily replied. I wonder if humans can eat our fruits and vegetables. I shook my head no. They are predators. The only thing they can probably eat is... Uh, flesh. Elva flicked her ears in annoyance, Dad. They are omnivores. They can eat plants just fine. I meant, do you think there might be anything that would be possibly dangerous? Kerma beans have been known to be lethal to Krakatl due to the gases that build up. I hung my head in shame. There I go again, letting my biases get the better of my logic. I might just be the worst journalist. I slapped my face with both paws and took in a deep breath I don't know what would and would not be dangerous to a new species. We will have to wait for their scientists to study our food to be safe. If the human s really are friendly, I'm sure it won't be long before we share our foods. Just hopefully they won't want to eat any animals. Elva ears flicked in a happy way and a small smile formed across her face. Thanks, Papa. From the little we have, they seem to be really nice. We walked in silence for a while. The cool wind coming in from the dark side made the walk under our ever-present sun pleasantly cool. As we made our way through the streets of the capital, I watched all the races that called our cradle world home and remembered how many of them have a hard time dealing with our higher-than-normal gravity. I wonder how the new race is going to do in our gravity. Some races just refuse to come here because of it. Elva gripped my arm so that I could guide her as we walked, and she thought, Well, that is really important, actually. We all saw them on the address Tarva released. But what if those suits were the only thing letting them even stand up? When we get home, I all send a letter to the exchange agency. If everything goes well, we might have a new species in the Federation. Assuming the Federation doesn't expel us. I let out a light chuckle. They aren't going to expel us. 
Sure, there may be sanctions against us, but between where Venlil Prime is located and the fact we have been in the Federation for a very long time now, we can safely bet the Venlil, and maybe our new human friends will be in the Federation for a very long time. Elva's floppy ears perked up the best they could. It was always adorable watching them flop back into her face despite her best attempts to control them, though in an instant I had to stop us and turn around. We just passed up the best chain restaurant this side of the galaxy. Eee! The stray you eatery! Oh, let us go in already! Elva would have pulled me in if I wasn't as excited as her to have another loaf of this miracle food. As the warm air of the eatery blasted across us, I remarked to Elva, Hey, maybe when we get to meet our partners, we can share some of this stuff with them. If it's safe, of course. Memory transcription subject. Talon, Prime News Anchor Date Standardized Human Time. July 25th, 2136. It was my paw off when my holopad dinged, waking me from my much-needed slumber. I rolled over and decided if someone needed my attention at this early of a claw, they could call me. I started to drift off to sleep as <coughs> shrieked through the house. I sat up trying to figure out if that was the smoke alarm, or maybe it was the carbon monoxide alarm. Oh, wait, it s Elvis day off as well, so. Speg, it's the exchange program. I opened the message and began to read Welcome to the Venlil Human Cooperative Exchange for Empathetic Study. Reminder. Keep talk about predator behavior to a minimum. Research is ongoing. Their species name is human. Be polite to put your best paw forward. We thank you for your service. Name, Rose McDermott Gender. Female age, standardized human time, 15 years occupation. Uh, I am a professional teenager. I guess that makes me an unemployed dependent. Lives in New York City, New York, USA, Earth interests. Photography, my pet bunny. Van Helsing, journalism, skydiving. Painting dislikes, bullies, mosquitoes, spiders, deep water or water that I can just see through, and that weird thing that happens when you go up in elevation suddenly and you have to pop your ears. Attached is a text message and contact link. You may respond with a physical or audio message of your own or respond to this message with declined to exit yourself from the program. I blinked in confusion and tried to rub the sleep from my eyes. This was a lot to unpack and I haven't even had my first meal yet. Okay, okay. My daughter alarm has finally gone silent, so I imagine she is already talking. First things first, let's start at the top and work our way down. Rose McDermott. Okay, two names is kind of weird, so I will definitely need to ask how to correctly say her name. She is only 15? Is that old for a human? Wait, teenager? Okay, so she is a juvenile and has been accepted to the program? Maybe she matured early enough to control her thirst for violence, and the beasts want to use her to try and show they aren't violent. I slapped myself on the forehead. Maybe try and keep an unbiased opinion, Talon? They could be just like our kids, but with meat-tearing fangs and predatory eyes. No. Stay positive. Um, I have never seen my daughter sprint off and start destroying a produce stand just because she was hungry, so maybe humans don't have a strong hunting instinct, so they believe she is mature enough for this program? Spig, that actually makes sense. Okay, moving on, it looks like we have a translation bug. Pretty common in uplifts that Dante have a unified language yet. New York and New York City probably come from two different languages. I doubt a sane species would allow for such a weird naming convention otherwise. Interested in photography? Strange. I wonder what she likes to document as a hobby. And humans keep pets. I imagine this bunny is probably a tracking animal or something they used to hunt. I doubt they would keep prey as a pet and not call it cattle. Journalism? She is interested in journalism. Oh, this is really good. I might be able to get more truth from her about humanity than I could the UN reps or the seemingly cherry-picked archives on pre-nuclear war human nature. Oh, this may just be the scoop we needed to truly understand this new species. What is skydiving? Do they jump into the sky like it's a body of water? We Venlil aren't the most interested in water, but I bet a race like the Colchians might have a race that's as interested in water as them. That makes sense since more than half of their world is covered in water. They definitely have an affinity for water as there is no way they could have dominated their world without that. Wait, painting? Humans have art! What? That doesn't make any speaking sense. How is art supposed to help them hunt? I, I need to stay calm. I have a human pen pal I can simply ask her. And wow, do I have more questions now than I have answers? I held my pad in my paws for a moment. I hadn't received a message from Rose yet, so maybe I could take the initiative and keep this going in the direction I want. Hello, Rose McDermott. My name is Talon. I am a journalist with Capital News here in our capital on Venlil Prime. I v read that you have an interest in journalism, and I have to admit that I am interested in what your journalism is like. Maybe I should take the initiative here and say that for us we have three sorts of teams. The first are the seekers. They scour the internet and other sources for any leads that might be worth handing over to the journalists to delve into. I am with the second group known as the journalists. We research and learn as much as possible about a story and present it to the world. 
to keep the populace as up-to-date as possible on recent events. Sometimes we are the ones to go out and do the Seekers' jobs, and sometimes they do our jobs. But neither of our roles are set in stone, so we don't get matted pelts if we swap teams for a bit. The last group is basically our bosses. We call them the deciders, as they make the decision on what is the priority to get to the public, and what can take a backseat if things get too crowded. Usually if it involves public health or a major event happens. Like a new race coming back from the dead and saying hi, it will be on the news faster than light coming from the sun can hit our homes. I'd love to learn more about you and your people, and I will do my best to answer any questions you might have. Sincerely, Talon, Capital News Journalist, I let out a sigh as I hit send. I slowly climbed out of bed and took a hot shower. The heat from the steam and the pressure from the water was almost like a massage and did wonders to melt the stress away. As I stepped into the dryer room, I heard a light ding come from my pad. I couldn't check it still sopping wet! The dryer was a pleasant experience if you had a shorter coat, but my ancestors chose to live near the twilight zone and give me the DNA for a cold-resistant coat that just loved to hold in moisture. Finally dry enough that I want to start to mildew, I approached my pad and saw that Rose had already replied to me. Hello, Talon! It's really nice to get the chance to talk to you. Okay, well, text to you. I never thought I'd get to chat with not just an alien, but a journalist as well. Okay, so for us, journalists are just one kind of news reporter. Journalists tend to work for newspapers, magazines, and their online counterparts, and tend to both find and research their topic for their article. While news analysts, research, and news reporters tend to be the ones who work and give the news on the TV. Okay, so that's not too different from how we do stuff, and a lot of aliens actually have a bit of a divide like this as well. I guess I'd guess I'm more of a news analyst and reporter by her definition. I do have a question for you. Does your name have a meaning? Like for us, our names are sometimes just names, or are a name someone in our family has, not to be confused with our middle and surnames, and sometimes they have a special meaning. My name, Rose, is the same as the name of a red flower here on Earth that we give to each other as a romantic act. My dad's family used to own a flower shop, and my dad grew his own championship winning roses, and his first loss happened when he gave his best rose to my mom before they started dating. They named me Rose to remember that they would both give up their dreams to be with each other and help me reach mine. Though it's a little bittersweet they gave up their dreams for me, it just makes me want to make them more proud. Sincerely, Rose McDermott, amateur journalist PS, just call me Rose. I was sitting at the bar in our kitchen at a loss for words. She was named in the very same manner as our daughter. Why would predators value a flower as a symbol for romance? There was definitely something up here, as I never let the exchange program know I even had a daughter, and there was no background check on me, so the humaness had no way to know this about me. This was genuine. Maybe the Arxer are the exception to the rule and not the standard. Perhaps sapient creatures naturally value each other. I don't know how to best put it, but you have already flipped so much of how I viewed the world. My daughter is Elva. The Elva flower is a twilight flower that only blooms above the tree line on our mountains in the twilight zone of our world. It has some amazing health properties, and many a Venlil would make the dangerous journey to these mountains to get the flower to treat illness in their loved ones. We named my daughter Elva as a promise to her to go beyond everywhere we are comfortable for her sake. In a sense, we named her the same as your parents named you. I am still flabbergasted at the concept that your father grew flowers. I guess they are a potent medicine then. I don't expect predators would waste time growing plants that have no use for them. As for my own name, it is a generational name that S meaning was lost to time. If I had a son, he would have been named Talon as well. I'd love to know more about the interest you had in skydiving. The term almost has no meaning to me. I know about diving into water, but we even Lil aren't too excited about the concept of swimming, and the sky portion makes it sound like you jump from really high up. Sincerely, Talon, possibly the premier human researcher on Venlil. I let out a small chuckle at the little joke I made at the end. It was possible I was one of the few Venlil to know about human naming conventions. I started to absent-mindedly start eating the quart seeds in the bowl before I had to remind myself of my diet and switch to yake root. My tail actually started to swish happily when my pad received a reply from Rose. Dear Talon, I would appreciate it if you wouldn't e-call us predators. A human predator to us is a sick person that hunts down and hurts children. They are so hated by humans that when they are arrested and sent to prison, they have to be isolated from the other inmates that would not hesitate to make them suffer for the horrible things they did. I am sorry. I know that sounds really bad, but it makes me feel sick that you might think of me like those monsters. My tail stopped swishing. I guess she didn't know about those of us with predator disease. I guess humans can get it too, and from the sounds of it, it's far worse for humans than us. The thought that humans have to protect their children from both the predators of their homeworld but the mentally sick of their own kind filled me with sadness. From what I have heard, you guys live in true peace with the only exception being the Arxur. 
I want to lie and say I've been a vegetarian all of my life, but I am now, and I do love the thought that nothing that can feel has to be hurt for me to live. Though most humans done to hurt animals to eat, we have labs that grow cloned meat that is basically just a weird plant now. Again, I'm so sorry to disturb you with that. Now I felt like a piece of shit. The thought of them growing meat like plants made me queasy, but if what she said is true, humans dropped their need to eat meat. They cured themselves of being pre. Hunters and Rose said she is a vegetarian. The pad translated that to one that eats only vegetables and fruits. Humans Dante need to eat meat to live. This is huge. I, I was wrong. We were all wrong. Human S truly came here to join us. Sure, their past and present is filled with violence, but they wanted to live like us. My hope slowly faded as I remembered how I hurt her. How she apologized for the thought of what she was saying was causing me distress. I was not making Elva proud right now. I was hurting an innocent child. Dear Rose, I am so sorry. What I have said is simply wrong. What I have believed is wrong. I hope you can forgive me for my insensitivity to you. The thought that humanity had to safeguard their children from both Earth as natural Predator S as well as Predator diseased humans fills me with sorrow. I am also sad to tell you that life here isn't as peaceful as it seems. There are individuals that become twisted in mind and contract a disease we call predator disease. These individuals are dangerous to the herd and often have to be separated to keep people safe. Some of them are saved with our institutions and good medications, but some of them are dangerous to the point they can never rejoin society. Sadly, though, sometimes good people who are just a bit weird get sent to these institutions. There was one poor soul who was sent there simply because he had a medical condition that made him big. I lost my job a long time ago trying to get the truth out and sadly failed to help him. Thankfully, his lawyer and mother were able to set him free and reveal the truth about the horrid practices of that place to the world. Now our institutes are closely monitored to make sure they are helping their patients and not torturing them. I hope that you can forgive me for my ignorance, and I hope we can work together to better understand each other. Speaking of which, you said you were vegetarian and most humans don't eat hurt animals to eat. So what is a bunny? I thought it was an animal humans used to hunt with. I did my research and I know early humans had dogs that they would use to track their prey, but this sounds different. Apologetically Talon professional butthead. I set my pad down and held my head. Elva danced into the room and stopped when she saw me. Papa, are you okay? What happened? I turned to look at her. I tried to wipe the tears away from my face. Oh, I was just being a butthead. I didn't realize it, but some of the words I said to Rose hurt her. I didn't even think that would happen. I think everyone is so preoccupied making sure humans don't hurt us that they never thought to make sure we can hurt them. I held my head with my paws again. Elva walked over and embraced me. I know, I did the same thing. I was so excited to talk to Trissa that I hurt her too. Thankfully, she didn't get too upset and we got it cleared up after I apologized. Did you apologize yet? My tail began to wag again. The thought of Elva hurting someone seemed ridiculous, but I knew how easy it really is. And I was proud of how quickly she was able to make amends. Yes, dear. I have. I'm just waiting for a response. Did you know that Rose was named almost the same way you were? Elva tilted her head to the side to prompt me to continue, and I had to suppress a squee at the adorable look. A rose is an earth flower that humans give to each other as a sign of affection. Rose's father grew roses for a competition. I guess kind of like our vegetable competitions to try and grow the best one possible and share tips on how we did it. He gave his best rose to her mother before they started dating and he lost the competition. They named her Rose as a promise to always put their love for her first. Elva's smile started to warm my cold heart. Before she could say anything, my pad dinged again. I quickly opened the message and read, Dear Talon, thank you. I was worried I would have upset you. I am glad you care so much. Also, you are not a butthead. You were just curious and excited like I am. I also didn't answer your question about skydiving. Elva groomed my cheek for a brief moment before going into the kitchen to get something for first meal as I continued to read. Skydiving is the sport of going up really high in a plane and jumping out. What the speehg? My eyes nearly bulged out of my head, and my sudden outburst spooked my beloved Elva, causing her to throw a yake root straight up into the air. They jump out of airplanes while they are high up. Memory transcription subject. Talon, prime news anchor. Date standardized human time. August 17th, 2136. I sat up straight and with a cheery voice addressed the Studio S camera as though it was a billion people desperately waiting for any news on what is going to happen to them. Honestly, it was a lot more. Good first shift, Venlil Prime. The cold front has finally started to retreat and has left us with a pleasantly warm 76 degrees F 24 degrees C. I hope you use your good conditioner before you head out, as the humidity is on the high side at 56%. I glanced at the domed mirror to make sure my salt and pepper fur was still presentable as I took a sip of water as my co-host said her lines. Finally, my quee came as she finished her segment with, and now we have a special interview for you all. 
Our very own journalist, Talon, here is a part of this historic exchange program and will be talking with us about humanity just after the weather forecast. She subconsciously and nervously flicked her tail back and forth as she shakily said her lines. I chose not to hold that unprofessionalism against her, as these are trying times. Cheerily, I picked up where she left off. I look forward to seeing you all there. The green recording light flicked off as the weather journalist started the forecast. Kotaka, the chief decider for Prime News, quickly scurried over to me to catch up as I briskly walked over to the interview set. Okay, Talon, are you sure that you want to be answering the first list of questions? Kotaka flicked his tail in a begging manner. I would have thought him cute were it not for the liquor belly and thinning fur that comes with it. You know why I can't answer those questions. Tarva herself would come down here if we started a stampede, and I don't want to get a child arrested by the UN because she told me things she wasn't he allowed to. I still shuddered at the thought of what Rose considered a fun time would be considered cruel and unusual punishment by our peoples. My pudgy bosses lightly stomped his foot as he grabbed his head with his paws and groaned okay. Fithreen, we will stick to the tamer version. Kotaka took his seat across from me, and as the forecaster finished our cameramen started to slowly count down. Kotaka brightened up considerably and spoke up hello again. It's been quite a while since I have appeared on the screen. My name is Kotaka and I am the chief decider here for Prime News. Today, our very own journalist, Talon, will be sharing some information about the first part of the Human Venlil Exchange Program. How has it been going so far, Talon? Kotaka never failed to provide that warm, fuzzy feeling of a friend that genuinely cared about you. Honestly, he bailed me out of the hardest times of my life, back when I was worth nothing to noon. I let out a happy sigh as I wagged my tail. So far, it's been a very interesting and honestly pleasant experience. It's hard to remember that she is not a Venlil. She reminds me of my own daughter's curiosity for better and for worse. We both shared a chuckle at all the frights she has given the pair of us. Uncle Kotaka never had a family, but Elva might as well have been his own child with how giddy she got whenever Unki came to visit. I am glad to hear it. Though really? Is it that hard to tell a human apart from a Venlil when communicating through messages? I took in a deep breath and held back a defeated sigh. It is. Whenever something comes up that is distinctly human, it has so far always caught me unprepared. In one of our many conversations, we were talking about human achievements, and Rose just casually mentioned that they just broke the land speed record on Earth. I took a deep breath in. Care to guess how fast and what kind of vehicle did this? Kotaka ruffled his fur in contemplation. I would guess it would be an old magnetic train, though I doubt it could get to more than, say, 300 kph, 186 miles per hour? I actually had to stifle a chuckle at that. That is way off. Try a land car. Not a train, a car, and it went at speeds of 6. 7 kilometers per second, 14987. 5 miles per hour, that is only a little shy from their predicted maximum speed limit of a terrestrial vehicle on Earth. Kotaka's jaw dropped at the thought, as did several of the staff watching the interview. I explained several different companies and several different governments collaborated to make every condition correct to let the pilot enjoy a three-second ride. A ride that he would have been unconscious for were it not for the inertial dampers that had just been invented. Before you start calling this fake, I've seen a video of it. The UN didn't think such a thing was crazy, and they even thought we might have beaten that record already with our technology. They were shocked when I said it was a crazy notion. While I let out a little chuckle, Kotaka had to completely regain his composure. I, 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 why? I just waved it off with my tail. I got many reasons for it. One was that it was the test for the very mission that made first contact with us. Another, that it was a clever marketing strategy for the businesses involved, and they bullied the government into helping. Rose believes it was just that they won to be satisfied with a record until it's impossible to push it any further. She said it was just in human nature to always push themselves to be the best that they can possibly be. She even told me about having to go to therapy as that mindset had actually started having negative effects on her life. My friend had finally regained his composure. Negative effects? How would trying to be the best you can be have a negative effect? My tail drooped as I explained it S because it becomes an obsession to them. They get so caught up in trying to improve that failure, and even just the thought of failure can cause them severe emotional distress and even physical pain. Rose admitted she isn't he an evolutionary biologist, but from what she understood, the continent they originated from was extremely competitive. Even a small failure meant the countless larger and more successful predators would kill them. Those that obsessed over perfection survived and passed on their genes. Thus, every generation of humans got more and more obsessive, till they broke into sapience and developed the tools to protect themselves. And all of a sudden their obsessiveness stayed, but the constant threats were no longer there to balance it out. Kotaka took the moment to steer us back on course, and from there the interview went normally. I shared some interesting tidbits about humanity. I was particularly proud of my explanation of human instincts. 
Kotaka, if you were hungry and saw a buffet of food along with an edible art piece that is covered in a glass dome, would you go into a hunger-induced frenzy, ignore the buffet, smash the glass dome, fight off the security guards and eat the art piece? Kotaka looked at me like I was crazy before the realization dawned on him. Now you understand. Simply put, a human could eat a Venlo like I could eat this chair if I wanted to. Neither of us would do that as it s stupid. A human would rather eat fruit and softened vegetables before they would try and hurt an innocent creature to get nourishment, let alone one that they added to their version of a herd. After what felt like the briefest interview, I had Kataka thanked me and thanked the audience for tuning in. With a wave, the floor director declared that we were off the air and Kataka ushered me into his office. It was a humbly small room for a chief decider, but he likes to be reminded that he was only one bad day from being in an even smaller office. We both sat on the same side of his desk as he pulled out a bottle of Wolvectica. My eyes bulged at that sight by the sun and the stars. Kotaka! How much did that cost you? He just started to laugh as he poured us both a glass. Remember when we covered that story of yours? The one that got the institutes investigated? Just before the election? Tarva sent this as a thank you for our professionalism and journalistic integrity and asked that we don't give her any special treatment. He held the glass up and I held mine in mirror. May the sun always warm us and may the stars guide us back to her warm embrace. We both slowly downed the shot, savoring the woody yet smoky flavor of the tikka as it burned down our throats. I will tell you this, Talon, not once in your entire career have you ever underperformed. I am scared. I tilted my head quizzically and he continued, People make mistakes and this is huge. We know they are predators. They haven't he denied that. They still eat meat, and I find it hard to believe that they would just randomly decide to stop hunting. Every animal enjoys what it does. We enjoy finding a nice fruit as that is how evolution encourages us to stay alive. It rewards predators for killing. That is how evolution encourages them to stay alive. It makes no sense that humans would not want to kill. I am not saying back out. I just want Rose and you to be safe and cross your TS and dot your IS, okay? I nodded my head, I know. My daughter is going. I am going so if the worst comes to truth, the humans sink their teeth into me and not her. Kataka flicked his tail and poured us another shot each. We will finish this with Elva when you both get home, okay? I tipped the glass back, hugged my brother in all but blood, and left to go home. It would not be long before I would meet Rose in the fur. Wait, humans, don't he have fur? Uh, in the clothes? As I stepped out of the building, the warm air and my slightly drunk Brian decided they would not be working together tonight. I wobbly made my way to the street to wait for the transit to arrive. Carefully, I pulled out my holopad trademarked to the Speaking Farcel Technological Innovations Incorporated Coprophagies. Slowly, with but a single digit, I typed to Little Flower Rose Hello. I am drunk! The interview went well, I think, though I did get a little carried away and went off of the scripted questions a little quick. But I think it did wonders to let people know you guys aren't really that weird. It took me a few attempts to hit send and even a few more attempts to get into my seat on the transit. It was about the time that I got to my front door that my pad echoed out the tune I set for Rose S. messages. I drunkenly sang along to see you tomorrow. Toe, hear you laugh! Oh, once more! I got in through the door and threw myself onto the meeting room couch. Slowly, I rolled to my pad, lifted it above my head, and started to read. I then dropped the pad on my face. Sitting up this time, I began to read again. Good morning, Talon! Was it really stressful? I'm sorry I put you through that kind of stress. If you aren't a feeling good, we can always talk later. Slowly, I responded, Buh! Not stressful at all, um, hell. Me and your unky just had a celebratory drink. He's a bit worried, but he just hasn't had the chance to get to know you. Speaking of which, just a few days now, and we will be meeting in the fur. Or clothes for you. I vaguely remembered hearing my favorite song go off again, but as I peeled myself out of a drool-soaked couch, I realized I had fallen asleep. My daughter's beautiful voice sang out to me as she handed me a glass of water. Good waking, Papa! I hope you don't mind, but when you were asleep, I took a bit to talk to Rose. I waved it off with my tail as I took my time to rehydrate. What did you talk about? Elva just giggled. Well, we gotta know each other a little bit. Explained who her unky is, and Rose learned that you likely drank enough alcohol to kill several humans. Apparently, once you hit 10% alcohol drinks, go from being fun to being poisonous. It wasn't the most surprising thing I've ever learned. Well, she could always go get a drink with a Zerulian. They have a pretty low tolerance for that sort of thing. Honestly, a lot of aliens can tea hold their drinks. What do you think of your Ahem sister from another mister from another world, as Rose would put it? Elva let out a light giggle. I think we would have been best friends if we could have been neighbors. She is very nice. 